Google Reader allows you to easily organize websites in a way that makes it easy to review a lot of them at once without having to visit the websites. One way you can add sites to your Google Reader is just by knowing the website or even the RSS feed that you want to do. So for um, if you want to follow everything that's going on at Camp Magic MacGuffin, we're going to go to subscribe and we're going to put in the Magic MacGuffin website. If I can type this, my typing is horrible today. That info, we're going to add this. And right now we subscribe to uh, Magic MacGuffin uh, website. Uh, the default view of Google Reader is kind of this expanded version. I like clicking those little bars so you get the abbreviated version. And when you look at this, you're seeing as headlines all the newest content that's been added to uh, DS106. It's been constantly updated. Uh, black meaning it hasn't been read yet. If you click that, you get a little preview. You see Scott Lowe's post there. Shortcuts, you can hit J and just go down to the next one, next one, next one, K, K. And then when you close it, you can actually see um, the ones you've read are already um, not in black anymore. So at a quick glance, you can see what's new. Now this is the way you would add one site at a time. We set some things up in Google Reader, so you can actually add things in batch by this thing called OPML files which more or less creates groups of feeds that you can add to Google Reader. So to get to this, we're going to go to our settings over here, Reader Settings, and general settings that we're going to look at. The most important one we're going to find right now is Import Export. So here we can import subscriptions. So I'm going to uh, look for an OPM file and go to my downloads. And I can see if I want to follow all the ones um, from uh, the uh, UMW students. I've already saved this file. I'm going to import, upload this file to Google Reader, and it's showing me all these files that have been added. Um, I'm going to add one more just so we can get a sense about what's going on here. So I'm going to choose another file. Let's say I want to follow what's going on in bunk four, those rascals. I'm going to import those as well. And then I will upload this. And I've added even more uh, feeds to my set. When I go back to my Google Reader view, um, I can actually see that I have these things now um, in folders, which I just toggle open and close. So um, here is the um, Bunk 4 set. So if I just click the folder name, I get a combination of all the um, feeds have been added from uh, the individual blogs in this group. If I want to, if I just want to look at, say, Andy Rush's blog, I can see just the things that Andy Rush has added to his site. Um, or if I just wanted to look at um, all the UMW students, um, I can look here and get a quick review. Now, one little trick that one of my students taught me uh, last semester is uh, we asked people uh, in DS-106 to track the comments that they've done. Um, so if you're using Reader to sort of be the base where you scan uh, for your comments, and if I wanted to um, comment on Sierra's post, I'd actually go and uh, click it, and uh, I want to look at um, her blog here. And if I wanted to, I could add a comment um, to her blog. But if I want to keep track of the ones I've commented on, my student last year suggested just using the star feature. Um, so as you go through and you're reading comments and you've um, blogs and you're adding comments, if you use a star feature, it's a quick way to sort of notate the blogs that you've made comments on, just in case someone asks you, hey, what blogs have you commented on? But mainly, the benefit of Google Reader, again, is being able to scan very quickly um, at a large group of sites and uh, review them, uh, preview them without actually having to go to the websites. And that is something that saves time. That's your Google Reader tips from CogDog.